Hey, it's Mars, and this is Let's Make a Dungeon Crawler Part 30, and in this video we'll be making improvements to our inventory. So I'll move to the RPG UI scene. And I've imported my textures that I've made for the inventory, and I've put them up onto Open Game Art, and I will put a link to them in the description if you'd like to follow along. I'll start off by changing the import settings from textures to sprites. And then I'll also change the filter mode to point, um, just so that Unity doesn't try to blur the pixels. Um, since I made these in Photoshop, I like the way they look, and I like the pixels where they are. So I'll change that to point, hit apply. I'll start by replacing the background that the orb is sitting on. This new image is 530 by 129 and that messed up the children placement. So I will snap them to the bottom right with alt shift left click and then the background, the orb itself, was 10 to the left, negative 10, and 10 up. I'll also replace the border. And if I look at my game view as it's set to 16 by 9, these pixels look pretty jagged. And I had thought that that was because I chose an import setting with a filter mode of point, but that's not actually the case. If we change from 16 by 9 in our game view and you manually add 1920 by 1080, then we can also scale to 100% and then move with the middle mouse wheel and we can see how the sprites on our user interface will look in game on at full screen. So this is good. I will also replace the health orb, background and border. Now my experience bar doesn't fit, but the new size between these two panels is 860, so I'll change the width on all four of these here, and that looks good. Now let's move on to changing the inventory. I put both the bag and the character sheet in the character sheet game object, so I will simply replace the character sheet image and I will grab that now, changing the import settings once again to a sprite with point filtering. Character sheet inventory. I'll change the color to have no alpha transparency. And then once again, we'll need to resize it to 554 by 1080 and then I'll snap it to the middle right with alt shift left click. Now our header I won't be using so I'll grab these four game objects and turn them off with alt shift A. Our stats window I won't be using either so I'll grab all of these game objects and turn them off with alt shift A. Our info panel, once again, I won't be using. I'll turn these off. And the bag, you can see these 32 inventory slots I made in Photoshop, so we'll want the bag to match that. I will set the bag's transform to snap to the right side of the screen. And then I'll change the position X to minus 10, position Y to minus 130. The width of my bag, or the bag slot area in this image I made, is 522 by 266.
Similarly with the character sheet, I'll turn off the header, the info panel, and the scroll bar. Unity doesn't want me to turn off the scroll bar, and I'm assuming that's because it belongs to the scroll view. So I will turn off vertical scrolling in the scroll rect, and there goes the scroll bar. So now we're just left with the scroll view, which holds the content. For the scroll view, I'll click on the rect transform, and then I'll hold alt shift and click on the stretch icon. I don't need a background image for the bag, so we can either turn off the image or just reduce its alpha transparency. Now the bag is ready to hold our items. To find the item prefab, we'll go to the RPG UI canvas and select the slot button prefab. This is the folder structure that it's in. And we're going to be making some changes to this prefab but for now, we're going to put some into our content, our bag scroll view content. When we hit play in game and open our inventory, we'll get 32 inventory slots or slot button prefabs instantiated, but we can actually drop them in now. I'll copy and paste this until I have 31. but it looks like they're not the right size. So we'll go to the content game object, and here it's expecting inventory slots that are 40 by 40, but this was made for 64 by 64. Now let's change the width to 522. Now all that's left to change is the spacing and padding. I'll get rid of the spacing, and then we'll add padding to the left and top. Perfect. When working with prefabs, you should always be very careful when making adjustments in the hierarchy, because if you don't hit apply, you'll then have two versions of your prefab, one in the hierarchy and one in your project window, and they won't be the same. So I will go ahead and rename these bag slots from 1 to 31. So let's move on to editing the prefab itself. I'm going to turn off navigation. That's these yellow arrows connecting the buttons. Navigation is bad for mouse and keyboard because when we click a button it'll stay highlighted forever. So I will change navigation to none on the prefab and we can see that all of my game objects here were updated correctly. When an item is in our inventory the sprite will be put on the child image game object, but we can see that it's padded by 5 pixels. That's why it looks like we have a border around each inventory slot. I'll change that to a padding of 0. I'd also like to have a border around each inventory slot, so I'm going to grab the first slot here, and I'll simply do a new image its rec transform will be stretched and the image is going to be the 64 by 64 bag slot border. Now if I hit apply on this game object hopefully all of these bag slots will be updated. Perfect. Like I said the image child of the slot button prefab is where the inventory items image will be. The background is not needed in this case because of the way I designed my inventory, so I will simply change this slot buttons image component to have a transparent color. Lastly, we want to make sure that we only need 31 bag slots, so I will go to my player prefab and I'm going to change his item bag component to have a width of 8 and a height of 4. I'm also going to turn off allow multi-stack same 
because in a future video I'm going to show you how to implement a drag and drop inventory. It unfortunately does not support stacking items, which really sucks, um, but the system's amazing and we're just going to have to do without it for this project. So having said that, I'm going to turn off my character sheet with Alt Shift A. I'll save the scene and we'll move over to the town scene and try it out. That's all for this one. As always, thanks to those who have donated, and thank you for watching. If you learned something, hit that like button and join me next time, where we will be setting up our equip slots in the new inventory.